Hello everyone, I'm Major Jip, and today we're going to take a look at Subchase by Mattel Electronics. This was made in 1978. Quite an old little thing. It's not in too bad a shape either. Um, I bought this at a local yard sale for $1.50, I believe. Yep, $1.50. Subchase. Uh, it came just like this. And a piece of cardboard. No, uh, or a piece of styrofoam. No cardboard box. And I went to put the battery into it. it takes a 9 volt. And the foam has turned into a mess. That's all I could say about that. Uh, as you can see, it's not in the best shape. It's all torn up over here. And uh, it's missing some paint on some of the pluses and half pluses or whatever you call those things. Sure, they have a technical term. You have a fire button, D-pad, power switch, and the back, which still says the instructions. Surprised this isn't worn away, as you can see. 1978. And it does actually work. When the switch wants to. Now that's your radar. And the first enemy I see, I get killed by. Perfect. Try that again. Missed. Got it. For one point. I don't know why I try that. Three points. And as you can probably tell, the game just sort of goes on like that. Uh, the longer you go, the more enemies, or more LEDs light up coming at you, to be technical. Uh, look at that screen! That is some really early uh, LED technology right there. You could actually see the individual little, um, well, LEDs, I suppose, uh, that are inside the screen. You have this purple. That does is purple. It might not show up too well. And oh, still works. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, made in Japan, as you'd imagine. As I said, it takes a 9 volt battery. Let's try and not break the battery terminal, because I want to see what's inside of this thing. So, we're just going to take this. And I'm going to have to be very careful because I don't want to break this. No, it's not in the greatest shape. Oh, where is it? Yeah, I just saw some uh, scuff marks there, too. Oh, well. Okay, so that whole back kind of lifts off. has a bunch of pegs holding the board down. And that is some very old-school circuitry right there. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? We have two resistors. Um... A little ceramic capacitor, I believe that is. A electrolytic capacitor. Um, I think that's a diode. Probably to uh, protect it from putting the battery in opposite. And jumpers for sub or tank. Which means that this um, CPU, or I guess all in one package, that handles pretty much everything, um, is used on... Because they did have, ta have tank combat versions of the same game. So I'm assuming that means that all they do is put that jumper one way or another. And it tells this thing what game it is. Kind of wonder what happens if you change the uh, jumper to tank. I bet it just plays like a ta the uh, tank game did. Uh, you have a little piezoelectric buzzer. Uh, be careful with this because these wires usually break off of these very easily. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a rather shoddily soldered, um, buzzer. Well, those things are a pain in the butt to solder anyway, so. Well, depends. 
I suppose this is going to be the fire button. This is going to go flying out. Oh, look at that. All it is is two uh, wiper contacts on each side, one to just hold it in place, and a spring. That is a very simple way of doing it. I suppose if it works now, it it's good enough. If you lift up, you have the almighty LED display, which you can't even see. Uh, how do I get this out nicely? Like that. Okay, we'll go back to that. Oh man, that is a gorgeous LED display. Yeah, that's just all the individual little um LED chips, just with tiny little solder um wires going along them. Is that something that I would be able to see with the little macro lens I have? Hmm, might be worth a shot. I kind of want to get a better look at that. Alright, I hate to have to do this, but I'm using my phone's own little flashlight in order to see it. As you can see, there's that little bonding wire inside each individual little thing. Bonding to what I guess is essentially just a little uh, LED chip. Very interesting for the uh, age this is, they were able to do something like that. What's the display look like inside? Yeah, same sort of thing. That is very neat. I love these old LED displays. Anyway, let's get back to uh, looking at this thing. Alright, so after getting a detailed look at the display itself, you can see there's actually quite a bit of uh, effort put into this thing. Uh, you have the little diffuser here which, well, as you'd imagine, actually helps to diffuse the LED from being just a dot to the shape of little ships. And all kinds of remainders of the foam. And yeah, oh man, the little power switch is just a slider with little contacts that meet up to there. And, um... I'd figure all you'd have to do to power it would be to jump this, these two contacts. Yeah, and you can actually see the little display with the little, um, well, dot, basically. Oh, that is awesome. I'm going to have to make sure this thing goes back together. Well, I'll be back. A moment of truth. Did I break it? No, it still works. Excellent. I won. I'm about to lose. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at and um, seeing what's inside of the Mattel Electronic Subchase. I find that really interesting. It's very um. Well, very early electronics, and to be put into a little handheld gaming device, it's pretty neat. Uh, have any questions, comments, eh, feel free to leave a comment or ask me a question. Uh, like the video, I'll probably be having more about random technology because, I don't know, I like this stuff. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Major Chip, signing out.